Hello there and welcome to another Montmartre art lesson. Today we're going to be creating a watercolour painting of a lighthouse. It's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to learn some great techniques along the way. You see, the other day I was down at Byron Bay on a camping trip and I took a day trip to the Cape Byron Lighthouse. Did you know that that lighthouse is over 110 years old and located on the most eastern point of Australia? Well, I took my sketching pad with me and some watercolours and I created a quick study on site. So today we're going to be creating a more developed version of that study. So the paper that I'll be using is the Montmartre 300 GSM watercolour paper in the A3 format. The paints that I'll be using are the Montmartre watercolour cake set and there's 18 colours and they're really nice and vibrant. For the brushes, I'm going to be using a number 8 squirrel on round, a number 2 traditional mop and I'll also be using a number 6 palette knife. Yes, a palette knife. Well, this is going to be a lot of fun. so. Let's tape up our sheet to the board and let's get into it. So I've drawn up my thumbnail sketch, I've worked out my colours and I've drawn my lighthouse up onto my paper. So let's make a start and the first thing we're going to do is to lay down some sienna, some raw sienna. So let's get that on. If you haven't used watercolour cakes before, you will love them. They are really easy to use. Just soften them with water from the brush and they're good to go. It's a good idea to keep an offcut of the same paper you are using for your painting to test out colours. So I lay on the ochre sienna colour over everything but the ocean, lighthouse and half the sky. At this point I just get the colour down as quickly as I can. Because we will be doing a simple sunset I lay a little bit of this ochre mixture along the top of the waterline. As I do this, I don't recharge my brush with more paint. I instead dip it into the water and move the wash up the page, thereby lightening it. As I do this, I work around the lighthouse. I then lay a strong strip of ultramarine across the top of the page. I handle the wash the same way by diluting the paint with water as I move down the page. Again, I take care to keep the colour out of my nice white lighthouse. The Montmartre Squirrelon is the best brush for this because it holds so much liquid. It's one of my most treasured brushes. Now I create a green mixture from phthalo green and a touch of ultramarine. This will be for the ocean. I want this mix to be quite bright as I will be glazing on top of it. As I lay this in, I curve my strokes around the rock and dilute it as I go so it is lighter closer to the shore. While the wash is still a little damp, I pick out some pigment with my palette knife. I keep my palette knife close by because I'll be using it to create the rocky cliff my lighthouse is perched on. The first step is to create a dark colour from black and Prussian blue and lay it onto the rocky cliff area. With the palette knife, scrape the surface of the paint back in square shapes. The trick here is to only do small areas at a time. Otherwise the paint will dry before you can scrape it back and you will be left with a big dark mess. How big you make the rocks depends on the subject. This technique is great for river rocks and backgrounds for wildlife paintings. It takes a little bit of practice but when you get it, it's a great way to quickly suggest the irregular complex pattern of rocks. Remember to leave the darks in at the end of a stroke because these are the shadows. I then create a green for the grassy foreground. The problem I have noticed with some watercolour paintings depicting grass is the colour is a bit too green, I think. It's more believable if a fair bit of yellow is used. So our rocks and foreground are done and the background is now ready for our glaze. Now a lot of people don't think about glazes and watercolour, but if they're done properly they can be quite effective. The secret is just wait for the underpainting to be bone dry and be fairly quick with your paint application. If it's not bone dry then you will displace the underlying paint and reactivate it. So the first thing we're going to do is to create 
a slightly darker tone over the water here and on top of that green it'll create a really nice complex tone. The colour used here is an ultramarine with a touch of Prussian blue. I then create an orange red from crimson and medium yellow. I use the number two squirrel mop to lay the colour in in horizontal lines. So finally we can paint the main focal point of our painting, the lighthouse. Now the lighthouse is already white so we won't be painting it, that will be taken care of from the white paper but we will be creating some blue grey shadows. Now these shadows can be broken into four tones and if you refer to your printed out PDF it'll show you where to lay these shadows. So let's paint our lighthouse. I use the number two mop for this. I charge the brush and just use the tip. The colour is cobalt blue and black. Any areas in highlight are left and painted around. Keep the light source in mind as well. I add some water to the mix, thereby lightening it and lay a wash into the whole side of the building. I lighten the mix again with more water and lay it into the tower. Yeah. Well, I really hope that you got something from this lesson. I think that watercolours are so fun to create and with the 18 colours in the watercolour cake set, they're a very handy tool and quite easy to do wherever you like. If you're not there now, then have a look at our webpage at www.montmart.net where we have lots more art lessons. In fact, our webpage is a really awesome resource for artists of all kinds with our Facebook, our blocks and our family feed. And if you subscribe to that, you can get free hints and art tips. So stay tuned and remember, keep on painting.